We're back, boy! <laughs> Dude, it's been like a month since we last made a video. Yeah, it's been a while. Bad. Well, it's, uh, we're ringing in the new year here in 2019. Nah, no, that sounds... Uh, that <laughs> So today we're working on Jay's 2003 E46 M3. Um, one thing that we always noticed about the car from stock ride height was that there was always quite a significant amount of fender gap. So the way we're going to fix that today is we're installing a set of H&R coilovers for the E46 M3. Overview of the kit you get obviously the adjustable spring perches in the rear, um, four springs, um, they're significantly st uh, stiffer than stock, so just be aware of that. Looks like they include uh, Bill Stein shocks as well, so that's kind of a nice kit. And um, the only thing that the kit does not come with is uh, the top hats. So you'll either need to swap over your stock top hats like how we are doing it today, or you can uh, choose to get uh, adjustable camera plates if that kind of suits your uh, more needs. For Jay, he just decided to go and swap over the stock camera plates for now and probably go down that uh, route later in the uh, down the road. On top of the coilovers, we also got Reinforcement plates for the front. This is a must-have if you're gonna do any kind of suspension work Even if you were doing like a stock strut and spring replacement, I highly highly recommend getting these for an E46 um, Again reinforcement plates for the rear and if you're gonna ever drop these cars, you should always get a uh, shorter um, Sway bar end links for the front you don't want to use the stock ones because they're too long and they'll cause a lot of buying So make sure you get the small uh, shorter ones. We'll link what part numbers uh, these are uh, down in the description below, but other than that, I mean that's pretty much the gist of the kit So now that we've kind of explained that it's time to get going and install it I got a six shooter and a horse named Trigger It's real, 94, rugged war Kicking on your goddamn doors So obviously we always stress to jack up your car safely But also you should jack up your car in the safest manner underneath. There's, if you didn't know, on E46 M3s, there's a small little rubber pad near the oil pan. Make sure you use that. Don't jack it up anywhere else because you could probably uh, damage quite a bit of stuff under here. So make sure you use that pad when you're jacking up the car. I'll be coming down and shit. Yo, I guess rugged as a motherfucking carpet kit. And niggas love it. Not in the physical form, but in the mental. I spark in these cells get warm. I'm not a gentle. Man, I'm a method man. So step one, doing the front install is obviously the uh, sway bar end link has to come off. So it's a 16 millimeter nut on the, this is I believe a stock one. So it's a 16 in the in the front and then I, hold, I use a 17 millimeter wrench to hold it from behind. So once you zap it off, it's pretty easy. That, that comes down. And then the other, the other side is a 16 nut as well with the 17 millimeter wrench. So repeat that on the on the actual sway bar end side. Uh, once you do that, then it's pretty much I believe a 17 millimeter uh, pinch bolt. Yeah, it's a 17. So when you're doing the front suspension, it might make it a little easier to turn the wheel all the way to the side that you're working on. So in this case, we're working on the right side for right now. So I'm gonna turn it all the way to the left and then just put it back to the center once you're kind of done with that corner and do that. So just to make it a little easier. As you can see with the wheel kind of turned that way, you have a lot more access to this uh, 18 millimeter pinch bolt right here. You need to remove this in order to bring the knuckle assembly down. Um, while it can be kind of tough and you can use a pry bar to spread it, I opt to use this tool. Uh, I believe this is called like a like a European knuckle spreading tool. I bought this from ECS Tuning. We'll link in, in the description down below. Um, essentially, is you put this in between the space back here. It's gonna be hard to see, yeah, the but ain't really bad. there is a space where my finger is back here, and you kind of just line it up and you use a ratchet to kind of twist it so it can actually spread the knuckle apart just enough so when it's spread enough you can push this down um this might be kind of difficult for some people especially if your car has been in the east coast with winter salt and all that 
Um, if it is using a dead blow with a punch, we'll usually get the rust to kind of break off and then you can kind of wiggle it down. But um, given that this car has been in California, I don't think it's gonna be that difficult, but we'll see. So um, there's this headlight leveling sensor on the passenger side of the car. Um, what I end up doing was removing the two Allen bolts that hold this to this bracket. Um, and I'm gonna disconnect the connector to it. Um, you want to disconnect it because if you forget to put take this off, you'll most likely break off the either the the hinge assembly or bend the metal rod that goes to the control arm. Um, I feel this is the easiest way to do this. So just take off the two little Allen bolts, disconnect the connector, and just kind of let it hang out of the way. And then once you do that, um, just make sure to put the little uh, tool that we used, little spreader tool or your choice of a pry bar, in between the gap on the back of the, the knuckle. And once you do that, you should have enough room to be able to just kind of start wiggling the the arm off like that. Uh, just do be careful of the brake line and the uh, ABS uh, wires as well. You don't want to go too crazy, but um, just get them out of the way enough so that you have enough room to work with. Once you've got the knuckle dropped down far enough off the strut, the last thing to do is come up here and loosen up these 13 millimeter bolts. Um, just go ahead and take them off. Uh, just do note that when you take the last one off, make sure to either have a helper holding up the strut or you're down there holding it while you're taking it off, otherwise it will fall down. So just do note of that. Once you've got the three 13 millimeter nuts on top off the uh, top hat, um, all you gotta do is just kind of wiggle the strut out. And that's pretty much it. Also do note the orientation of the top hat. Um, there is a marker, so this is the right side and it's pointing towards the front of the car. So just do note of that when you put it on the uh, coilover assembly. You know how we mentioned earlier in the beginning of the video that you should get shorter end links when you're lowering the car and this is the reason why. Um, as you can see, the stock OEM BMW one is at a much, much longer uh, overall length. If you were to reuse this and lower the car, you would essentially be putting a ton of load and stress on these uh, joints where it would be doing this and it'd probably be fighting the entire suspension because obviously it's harder to, comp you know, you can't really compress a rod because it's steel. So that's why it's very important to get shorter end links while you're doing this. That way you don't have any kind of bind in the suspension because as we all know, you know, you never want any kind of suspension bind in any components. You should always be, uh, be able to move freely and uh, to, uh, it should be able to always move throughout its arc of suspension travel with no resistance or binding whatsoever. So if you, you do this install, you definitely need to get these uh, shorter end links. It's a, it's a must for this coilover install. In order to remove this strut out of the car, you'll first need to disconnect the sway bar end link. It's a 16 millimeter nut on this side. I use a 17 millimeter wrench on the back side to hold it. Um, since we are replacing the end link, we also have to do the same on the sway bar as well. So same thing. Um, once you do that, You'll have a 18 millimeter strut pinch bolt over here that you have to remove in order to free the strut. Um, and then you have a 13 millimeter nuts on the top to drop the strut out of the car. You'll also need to use a special tool. Um, this is a European spindle spreading tool that goes on behind a slot over here on the knuckle. When you twist it, it spreads the knuckle just enough so that you can push this down. Um, because on European cars, it's not a traditional, it's not how Japanese uh, traditional cars are where it's a two bolt type of strut uh, ordeal knuckle. They use a, a, like a pinching uh, mechanism to hold the strut into the car. So you'll have to use this to make it easier. Um, or you can use a pry bar, your choice. But other than that, I mean, once that uh, once you get all that, the strut should come out it's pretty easy. So when you're taking apart the front suspension, if you're swapping over top hats, um, even if you're not, just be wary that there is a right and a left uh, part number for these H uh, and R coilovers. It's indicated right there. There's an R right there and an L over here. So make sure you don't get them mixed up. We've got the struts out, and obviously, this is probably the part that most people dread. But get a set of good spring compressors, don't get anything cheap. 
and always kind of keep your body away from you know the spring itself but if you've never used a spring compressor um, it's pretty straightforward these ones have a 19 millimeter um, style like bolt on here and you essentially clamp it onto the spring and you tighten it and it kind of starts to comp literally compress the spring so you can get this top hat off safely without it kind of blowing all over the place so And on the stock E46 M3 top hats, it's a 21 millimeter uh, nut at the top. You just gotta zap it off. Once you know that it's kind of loose and there's no tension from the spring, kind of carefully get the top hat off. Make sure to kind of keep everything in place. Um, and then the spring comes off. And then the dust boot. Somehow, since the H and R's come with a dust boot already, they don't require the use of a um, of the bump stop anymore. So you'll just be using you'll just literally putting the top hat back on and just discarding. Um, they these shocks have an internal bump stop inside, so they don't require the use of the um, of the stock bump stop. So you can kind of just put those off to the side. He said, you ain't fooling anyone with that color scheme. <laughs> really? I'm essentially bringing the collar all the way to its lowest position so that the spring is at its lowest, lowest height. It makes it easier to put the top hat back on. So you don't have to fight to kind of push it back together and all that. Um, it's just a little trick that I do. You know, everybody's got their different ways, but that's how I do it. This is pretty much how the finished coilover assembly looks. So you got the strut, spring. Um, you've got this like little spacer that so the top hat can seat on. Um, other than that, I mean, it's just really zapping it back together and um, assembling it. We'll do the height adjustment on the car uh, once they're back in the car. Um, but for now, we're just going to get it back in and get it all s squared away on the front. When you purchase the H&R coilover kit, they give you this kind of like, uh, I guess like an anti-seize. Um, you want to use it inside the, uh, the strut knuckle area assembly. So you, when you put it in, it's easier to put the strut in. And also, if you ever have to take them back out, they're a lot easier to remove as well. So um, just uh, liberally uh, get the area all nice and lubricated and, you know, that's pretty much it. So. Before you put the uh, strut back in, make sure to use the uh, spindle spreader tool. Get it in and then spread the knuckle so you can get the strut in with no hassle. And then make sure to put your reinforcement plate on the top. It just sits on top, that's it, nothing crazy. Um, then you kind of just need to fish the coil over in. Get a nut, kind of hold it in place, like that, and then kind of push the knuckle into the strut. Again, do be careful of all the ABS stuff. Um, more than likely, you will need to use a, uh, a floor jack to raise the knuckle back up so you can get it into the strut. Um, it's kind of heavy, so just kind of save your back and use the uh, uh, floor jack when you can. Okay, one sec. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, little, one little pump. Go ahead. More. Okay. Once you've got the strut, the knuckle all the way seated up, 
You'll feel it when it seats up. Um, it'll keep going until it stops. There is a lip at the bottom of the coilover assembly that sits up against a, a lip of the knuckle, so you can't, you know, go further than that. But you want to make sure you get those two seated surfaces on correctly. You don't want it uh, crooked or anything like that. Once you have that, just use the 18 millimeter uh, knuckle assembly bolt and thread it in. This is the new um, sway bar end link. As you can see, it's a lot shorter. Um, it effectively reduces the amount of travel or the length that the sway bar has to move because obviously the car is a lot lower now. So you just want to get it seated in there, put the nuts on, um, straight forward and tighten it back up. So once you've got everything on the bottom situated, you come back up top here. Um, we're just putting the uh, strut tower bar back into place. Um, we just use the uh, floor jack to kind of hold up the suspension while we kind of work our way up around here. And then once you have everything in place, um, it's just a matter of uh, putting everything back together, tightening up, and you're pretty much finished for the front. So now that the fronts are done, we're going to be moving on to the rear. Um, the entire, a lot of the interior panels back here will have to be removed, and there's going to be a few uh, adhesive, like sound deadening pieces that we'll have to remove as well. Um, for this, it's pretty much just undoing the 18 millimeter shock bolt here. Um, before you do that, you'll need to actually put a jack underneath to support the the weight of the coil, essentially, I guess. Um, you don't want to just take this out with nothing supporting underneath because it'll just literally come straight, like banging out. So um, make sure you use a jack. Hmm? It'll come straight down. It'll come straight down. We got the uh, coil spring out. Um, just use the pry bar to kind of pry underneath and get it out. There's a big pro tip though. If you're having a hard time getting these out, uh, make sure your e-brake is this, uh, uh, I guess not up, make sure it's down. Um, if you have it up, you're gonna be fighting it because the cables are kind of slacked up and it's gonna bring this entire assembly up. If you bring it down, you'll have enough room to push it all the way down, pry it up, and you'll be able to wiggle the coil spring out. Um, on these cars, it's not a traditional McPherson strut like it is in the front. It's just a shock and spring assembly. They're two separate parts. Um, in order to get the shock out, there is an 18 millimeter bolt at the bottom and two 13 millimeters uh, nuts on the top. Um, you'll have to take apart some of the rear uh, interior panels, which we'll uh, highlight and all that. Um, the coil spring is just, it just sits in here, nothing fancy. Um, in order to get this out, you have to loosen that 18 millimeter bolt on the shock and make sure you have a floor jack supporting the knuckle because if you let this out, it will just completely go crashing out and you may get hurt. So make sure you use a floor jack. And there is a big pro tip, um, make sure your e-brake is disengaged, do not have it up because many times people have the e-brake up and they have a hard time getting this coil spring out. As long as you have it down, you can use a pry bar to kind of slip behind and be able to kind of pry the spring out towards you. So make sure your e-brake is off so that way it's, um, it makes it a lot easier removing this. And now that we've got the uh, spring the 18 millimeter bolt out and this is free to hang the only thing we need to remove next is the coil spring again like i mentioned make sure the e-brake is off so that way it makes it a little easier the way i do this is i grab my pry bar kind of get it underneath the perch of the spring and you should be able to kind of press it out like that and kind of wiggle it out like so could take a little bit of uh, finagling but just like that, get the spring out. So uh, before we move on, let's uh, make sure to clean up the, perch, the area of the perch where the spring sits, uh, do the top and bottom, and uh, we'll uh, get the spring in here and get this out and start doing all that stuff. So we've gotten access to the two 13 millimeter bolts back here. Um, obviously you gotta pull back the trunk liner. It's held in by, I believe, uh, four or five of the push pin clips. Um, you just kind of get a, pri a little, like, plier and kind of pry them back out um, super easy. Once you get it out of the way, it's just uh, pretty much just removing that 13 millimeter, uh, two of those 13 millimeter nuts on the back and getting it out. With the shock out, we need to transfer the upper top hat or strap mount to the H&R unit. The H&R unit doesn't come with one, so in order to do so, just a 17 millimeter uh, socket, just kind of right on the top. Obviously no spring compressors, but do be careful. If you know, don't hurt your fingers. Comes right off. And the H&R unit comes with a new nut, so you won't be reusing that. 
and it's got its own internal it's got its own bump stop underneath the uh, dust boot right there so you don't have to transfer the uh, stock OEM one which is really nice um, and I'll show you if you take the see how it's got it in there so I like how it's a banana color yeah. too so. <laughs> it's kind of nice you don't have to reuse uh, old parts which is uh, always a plus um, let's put that on and put this Put the new nut on. The 17 millimeter again. Just like that. Make sure it's seated. good that's all it is um, let me double check it. so once you've got it all assembled um, we're using the ECS tuning uh, reinforcement plates for the shock mount just goes right up on top like that and then you just gotta put it into the car a helper uh, comes in handy at this stage so you can have somebody put on the 13 millimeter nuts while you put this into the chassis so make sure to do that got it got it on the H&R kit for the rear uh, spring adjuster, it's a little odd. Uh, when you get it in the box, it's going to come pre-assembled like this. But when you try to put it in the car, you know there's not much light. You can't really put it in this way. So what you need to do is you actually need to get a set of uh, uh, ring pliers that can spread this out. And you'll have to assemble it into the car. Um, yeah, it's not a great way to you know for like you know a DIY thing but um, it has to be done otherwise you can't install these into the car yeah, at Harbor Freight. yeah we bought these at Harbor Freight it was like 14 bucks once you kind of get it in the tool you can spread it out and take it out super easy it's safer than using a screwdriver so and you then take these apart this bottom one threads out all the way pretty uh I mean it's not a bad design but I think some other companies do do this better than H&R so I mean, it's just personal opinion this piece sits right here from the kit and then this piece right here sits on top of it like so um, before you put this one on you're gonna want to go ahead and pretty much go ahead and put this piece underneath the car which this is the the bottom piece you got to put this on underneath but in order to do so you're gonna have to jack up this uh, entire assembly up so you can have enough room otherwise the axle is gonna be in the way and you won't be able to get it in You've got the top piece right here there's a little Allen uh, adjuster I believe it's just to lock it in place so go ahead and tighten that so don't forget and the bottom piece is here. It threads into this top one, so it kind of locks into place, so you want to tighten them as much as you can. Um, once you do that, then you can go ahead and put this piece on, which threads on like that, and start doing your uh, adjustment. Try to want You're gonna want to try to get it evenly matched to the other side as possible. And um, then you just got to put the spring on, put the shock back on, and you're pretty much done. As always in our videos, daylight turns into night. So, <laughs> but we've got the uh, new springs in with the adjustable perches, um, the H and R uh, shocks in the rear. Um, we tightened up the 13 millimeter uh, nuts inside the car um, right here. And we did the 18 millimeter uh, bolt down below. Uh, mind you, when you do do that 18 millimeter bolt, make sure that you use the floor jack and put the weight of the car on the suspension. You want to preload everything before you tighten it. The reason being is if you tighten the suspension while it's in its full droop position, when you go ahead and start putting load on the suspension, the bolts may back out. So you always want to put preload on the suspension before you uh, tighten everything. So um, quick tip daylight turns into night we just finished up but it's pretty late now so we're just gonna cut to a morning scene so we're back it's daylight now and we've got the car all finished up um, we've got the right hat all adjusted it's uh, 
sitting at about 25 and a half in the rear and about 25 and a quarter in the front. So it's about a quarter inch uh, uh, ride height difference from front and rear. Um, oh, sorry, I thought she was going to hit the recycling bin. No, it's fine. Okay. Uh, Jay wanted to get a little bit more of a, a rake into the suspension setup, so the car is kind of sitting a little lower in the front. Um, I personally like it. It looks really good. It makes the car, It gives the car a bit more of an aggressive uh, stance without being, you know, too overly aggressive. I think it really looks really good, so, um, yeah, just, you know, check it out.